The Great White North fights back against COVID-19. Canadian universities are front and center tackling this crisis and tracing its impact on our lives. This is Universities Fight COVID-19 from Radio Western. Each episode, we tell you about COVID-19 related research and commentary coming out of Canadian universities. Today's episode is from University of Alberta. An overwhelming number of COVID-19 related deaths in Canada have happened in long-term care residences. Carol Estabrook says that this tragedy has been a half century in the making. Personal support workers or PSWs should not be blamed for the mounting death toll. Esther Brooks is the Canada Research Chair in Knowledge Translation in University of Alberta's Faculty of Nursing. Take a minute to understand why PSWs left their posts. Esther Brooks asks us to think about how bad, how desperate the conditions must have been for the workers to do that. She and her team, translating research in elder care, have studied the quality of care in nursing homes for 14 years. The problem, she says, goes back decades, and the situation has worsened by the fact that Canadians live much longer and have more chronic conditions, while baby boomers are steadily making their way into the system. The result? A temporary but decades-long spike in numbers. People are entering care at older ages. They also have heart disease, diabetes, and lung conditions. There are also significant increases in diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's. Residents are highly vulnerable. They're older, more frail, and with less effective immune systems. This means that there is a population that requires more socially, medically, and physically demanding care from PSWs. And theirs is a job that isn't considered highly desirable by many. The pay is between $18 and $24 per hour. Protective equipment may be in short supply. Homes are perpetually understaffed and overcrowded, and the work takes a high physical and mental toll. The pandemic did not cause the crisis, but it shocked and overwhelmed the system and has exposed long-standing problems. Now, for example, seasonal flus can be deadly in such facilities, but residents and all staff are vaccinated against it. In the case of an outbreak, infection protocols kick in and the residence goes into lockdown. But COVID-19 moved easily through these fail-safe measures. Staffing issues started to appear as soon as staff members started testing positive and were quarantined at home. Family members were pressuring them to stay home for the fear of their own getting infected. Some of the staff were being threatened by landlords who did not want them to work in a COVID-positive home. Another thing, Canada has a nationwide practice of PSWs working in multiple homes. This proved fatal. Currently, provinces have combined regulations, legislations and pay increases to stop this. Esther Brooks contemplates that PSWs probably did not have enough personal protective equipment, education, or basic numbers to provide care. Certainly, they did not have enough basic and ongoing continuing education to get prepared. For example, physical distancing is vital against COVID-19, but PSWs are bathing, toileting, and feeding the residents. This is impossible at six feet or more. So what comes next? One thing is for certain, we need to prepare for mental health issues that will arise. What might be the condition of PSWs who have to watch people that they have formed long-term relationships with die in pain and suffer alone? Moreover, the biggest problem in nursing homes is loneliness, boredom, and a lack of purpose. But due to self-isolation and quarantining measures, there is no more communal dining. No more recreational activities, family visits, and excursions. But this cannot go on. There needs to be a national task force to rebuild the system. This means facility upgrades, better training and equipment, improved work conditions, and a serious look into an industry where sex and gender issues have not been addressed. Almost 95% of paid workers are women. 75% of unpaid caregivers are women. Two-thirds of people with dementia are women. And two-thirds of people in nursing homes are women. 
The elderly have become invisible in Canada. These people built Canada, but now they have no voice and they are frail. Hopefully, the COVID-19 pandemic is a wake-up call to make fundamental and long-lasting changes. This story was adapted from Michael Brown's folio article, How COVID-19 Overwhelmed Canada's Long-Term Care System.